Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating part one of the Market Day Cardigan Crochet Along, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. This is a simple grainy square sleeveless cardigan or open front vest made with, as you can see here, Red Heart Granny Square yarn. This pattern is being presented in three parts. Here is part one where we're making the granny squares that we'll later put together for our sweater. Be sure to go to parts two and three to see the remaining of the sweater. Those will come up on later days on the Moogly Blog channel and on MooglyBlog.com. Be sure to go to the link in the description so you can get all the parts for this lovely sweater. In addition to the yarn, you will need whatever hook gives you a six inch granny square made with five rounds using this yarn or your favorite worsted weight yarn. The yarn label recommends an eye or a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. Personally, I find I need a five or an H hook in order to get that six inch square. You should play with this yarn and use whatever hook gives you the size of square that measures six inches by six inches. That's along each side, not diagonally. Of course, it also helps to have your standard crochet supplies like stitch marker, or rather stitch markers, and a yarn needle and some scissors. Let's go ahead and get started making our granny squares for our market day cardigan. The instructions for making a granny square using Red Heart granny square yarn are found right inside the label that's on the yarn itself. You can see here is one I've already pulled off. This includes not only the instructions for making the beautiful sweater here this, that you see on the cover, but it also includes the instructions for the granny square itself. You can see right there is the instructions for the motif, and right down here at the bottom, there is charted instructions as well. You'll also find these instructions reproduced on mooglyblog.com. After you find the instructions, the next thing you'll want to do is look at the actual label for your yarn. You'll want to look at the picture of the finished granny squares so you can see what color you're using for the inside or first round of each square. Then, if necessary, you can go to the end of your yarn and pull it out until you find the beginning of that color. That will tell you, tell you where to begin your next granny square. So when you begin a granny square using Red Heart Granny Square yarn, it's important to follow the instructions to only start with a four inch tail. If you leave a really long tail, you won't have enough of this color to get through round one. After that, we begin with a chain of four. One, two, three, and four. Then we're going to join, join to that very first chain we made with a slip stitch. Now you may have made granny squares in other ways before, starting with a different number of chains or perhaps a magic circle, but this is the method recommended on the label. I recommend you start with this pattern and then you can make little adjustments as you go if it helps you keep on track for the colors. After you've made your ring, then it's time to start crocheting into the ring. For round one, begin with a chain of six. One, two, three, and those first three are going to count as our first double crochet. Then one, two, three more chains, and those last three will count as our first chain three space. Then we're going to continue on with round one. To continue with round one, we're going to work three double crochets into the ring and then chain three, three times. So we yarn over, go right into the center of that ring, not into any one of the chains, and make a double crochet. So there's one and two. You pull up a little bit more yarn from my skein there, and three. Then we chain three. One, two, three. This will become the second corner for our granny square. Let me pull that out of the way a little bit better there. Then we double crochet three into that ring again. There's one double crochet, two double crochets, and a third double crochet. Then we chain three again. One, two, three. So now that we've done that twice, let's do all that one more time. Three double crochets into the ring. One, two, 
Again, I need to pull up a little bit more yarn. One of the things I love about this one is it, it is center pull, so that makes it easy. Get our third double crochet of that set in there. There we go. And then chain three again. One, two, and three. Now, if you've got eagle eyes, you may have spotted we've got a color change coming up here. So I need to keep an eye on that to make sure it lands as close as possible to where I want to end this round. So as I make this square, you'll see me use several different techniques to help adjust a little bit as we go so that it ends up in just the right spot. Now, a lot of research went into this yarn, but of course, everybody's got a slightly different, you know, tension, engage, the way they hold their hands. So all of those are going to affect how your stitches lie a little bit. So you need to be able to adjust how you use the yarn in order to be successful with this yarn. So I need to work that last final side of my square here. You can see I've got one, two, three sides made. I need to finish this fourth side. So if you find that you don't have enough room left in here in the ring, you can just literally scooch those stitches over, make yourself some more room. We need to put two more double crochets in here. So there's one and two. And now I'm going to stop and see where I'm at and how close my color change is. I've made quite a few squares now using this yarn. So I've kind of gotten an idea of how much yarn I use for each stitch and how much yarn I use, for instance, in a slip stitch. So as you practice with the, this yarn, you'll sort of start to get a gauge for yourself there as well. So with this little bit left, I know that this is just about the right amount to slip stitch with into this first corner here. So after I make that second double crochet here on our final side, I'm going to finish up my granny square by finding the third chain that I made and putting a slip stitch right in there. And then we slip stitch again right into that chain three space. And you can see how that just about perfectly uses up that color change of yarn. Again, I've done this several times, so I've got a lot of practice and I've realized this is about the length I need with my personal gauge to end up right about in just this spot as we're ready to begin round two. Now you can see it's not absolutely perfect. There's a little bit of color bleed through, if you will, to the next round, but I'm okay with that. Remember that crochet is handmade, so you need to take sort of a relaxed approach to it. Let's go ahead now and we've finished round one. We'll begin round two. Round two starts the same way as round one and just like the rest of the rounds to come. We start again with a chain of six. Remember that those first three are going to count as our double crochet and the second of three, if you will, of those six count as our chain three space. So we need to finish this first corner with three more double crochets right in that chain three. You can see I got a little chain in that first color, but I'm okay with that. So I'm just going to keep going. I put three double crochets right there in that corner and then I chain one. Hold that up there. I know I'm, we're in the white part of the square now, so it's a little harder to see against our white background, but we chain one when we come to a set of three double crochets. That brings us to our next corner space. So in each corner, we work three double crochets. One, two, three, chain three, one, two, three, and then of course, three double crochets right back in that chain space. If you've seen a granny square before or you're familiar with them, this is a pretty standard way of making them. But like I say, if you find that you need to adjust how you make your granny squares a little bit with this yarn, that's fine too. Chain one again, come to the next corner space. We skip over all those double crochets there. And right in that corner, again, we work three double crochets. There's one, two, and three, followed by a chain three, one, two, three, and three more double crochets. One, two, and three. So if we can read our work, we see three double crochets right there. So we know we need to chain one and skip those. This is a chain three space, so we know it's a corner. So one, two, three double crochets. There we are. You can see that a little bit better there. 
chain three again. One, whoop, two, and three. And then three double crochets right back into that corner. One, two, and three. And we can see as I get close to my skein here, we're coming up on yet another color change. So again, anytime we start approaching the end of the round, that's when it's time to start looking at that next color change and seeing just how far away it is. As you, again, as you practice, you'll start to spot those differences and what that length means to you. But if you find that that color change is really far away and you say, oh my gosh, I've got too much of this yarn in this color, you can pull back a little ways and then try and make your stitches really loose. Try and keep your hands really loose every time for instance, when you chain, make sure you pull that loop up a little bit and make a nice loose chain. When you make a double crochet, keep it real loose, just like that. Really pull up on those loops. And that's going to use up a lot more yarn than if you work tightly. I'm gonna undo those little few stitches here. If this color change was coming up far too soon, again, I might pull back some stitches to get myself a little bit more room but then I'm going to work really tightly. I'm gonna keep a really tight tension on my hook and on that yarn. I'm gonna pull tightly and closely so that those stitches aren't any bigger than I need them to be. And that's how I stretch, if you will, that last little bit of yarn when I need more space. We can really crunch down, especially right here at the end where we're kind of crocheting over those slip stitches. As you can see, that gained me a whole bunch of yarn right there too much yarn. That was far too close for me. So if I need to loosen it up, I'll just pull back a little ways and make those stitches a little bit looser. Just make sure to relax my hands and pull up on those loops as necessary. So in this way, you can sort of adjust as you go and try and help you hit those targets a little bit more. If you get in a real pinch and if you find you're somebody whose, you know, stitches are just way too big and you've dropped down a couple of hook sizes and it's just still too small, take out the chain one over those groups. Just skip that part. There are lots of little ways like that that you can sort of adjust what you're doing to help you get those colors to line up just right. So right here, I'm looking and I can see that is far too much for me of this color left. It is definitely going to bleed into that next round quite a bit there. For me, looking at this here, I don't know how many of the inches that is, we'll say seven inches approximately. That's forget me, again, using this hook, about as much as I would use for an entire double crochet. So let's say I pulled this back, I worked it really loosely, I pulled it back, I worked it really loosely, I just could not use up this extra bit of yarn. We're gonna assume that for a minute so we can troubleshoot it together. We've just got too much of this color. What am I gonna do? Rather than just working, because of course as we come around for this last corner, we would work two double crochets here and then slip stitch to that third chain, right? Sort of like we did last time. That's how we finish up the square. When we come to our last corner where we already got our chain six, we chain one over those and we work two double crochets into that last corner. So let's go ahead and do that together here. One and two. And then our instructions say, like I say, to go ahead and slip stitch to that third chain right there. And then we would slip stitch right into that chain space, just like we did in round one. But again, I have way too much yarn here of this white color, of a round two color. So how am I gonna get rid of it? I don't wanna cut it. I don't want extra ends to weave in. I'm going to go ahead and put in a third double crochet. I'm just gonna go ahead and cover that right up right there. Might go ahead and still work it real loose if I've got that much yarn left over. But now we'll just squish those together and see, look at that. That brought that color change right there. So if I find that it's now it's too short, I can skip the slip, slip stitch into that third chain and just do my slip stitch right into that chain three space. And look at that. Couldn't ask for a better color placement than that. So that is just a couple of the other ways. You can absolutely fudge it a little bit, throw an extra stitch in there. You can see it's just gonna disappear because these all have three of otherwise. Don't join to that third chain, just slip stitch right in that chain space. And you can see now we've brought that next color right into place without having to pull it back over and over again. So that's yet another way 
you can fudge it as you continue. Continue, rather. So here it is after round two. Now we're ready to begin round three. Now rounds three, four, and five all grow from here in your standard granny square pattern. So let's continue. We're going to start round three again with a chain of six. One, two, three. That counts as our first double crochet. Four, five, six. Now we've made that chain space. So we go right into that same chain space for three double crochets. So there's one, two, and three. And then we can look at our work. There's a grouping of three double crochets right there. So we know we need to chain one and skip it. In that next chain one space, we work three double crochets right into the space. We don't want to try and work into that actual chain. The joy of grannies is that they're kind of quick and easy. Just double crochets and chains. You don't have to work into the chains themselves, just those chain spaces. Now we've worked three double crochets into that chain one space. We look at our work. There's a group of three double crochets, so we know we need to chain one and look for the next chain space. Ah, but this isn't a chain one, it's a chain three, so we know it's a corner. We work three double crochets. One, two, three, chain three again. One, two, three, and three more double crochets right in that same chain three space. That's how we maintain our corners. If you are new to, oh, I finished that stitch there. If you are new to granny squares and you are someone who finds themselves actually accidentally ended up with five corners or maybe three corners, it's happened to all of us. Do not fret. This is where things like those stitch markers can come in really handy. You put a stitch marker in each of those chain three spaces. And then as you come around, move it up to the next chain three space. And that way you'll always, at a glance, you can see you've got four corners going on. And that will help you a lot as you're beginning. So I've made my three double crochets there, chain one, skip that next set of three. Next is a chain one space, so I know I need to put three double crochets in there. One, two, three. We look at our work. Next is a group of three double crochets, so we know we need to chain one and skip those. Next is that chain three space, so we know it's another corner. So that gets our three double crochets, one, two and three, followed by a chain three, one, two, three, and three more double crochets right into that same chain three space. You can always stop and look at your work and see how it's making a nice little square there. So we're just going to continue just like this until we get to that next corner. And of course, as we go, we need to keep an eye on that color change. Now you can see I've almost finished round three, but what happened? I got to this color a little too soon. You can see with this particular colorway that these two colors are really similar. In other colorways, of course, there will be more of a difference, but these two colorways are a little harder to spot. So I always found I needed to break out a nice bright light to really be able to see. Now we can use this to our advantage. You can see here, if I lay it over, this yellow color isn't that different from the brown. I could probably get away with having this little overlap right here. And unless someone's looking super closely, they'll never even spot it. So odds are that's probably what I would do. Let's pretend though for a moment that we want to make it really perfect. We want to get that little bit of yellow right out of there. And of course we haven't even slip stitched yet. So if you find you're coming up a little bit short, same thing. We're going to pull back just a little bit, give ourselves some yarn to work with here. And then now, since we need a little bit more yarn, we need this color to go a little bit further. I'm just going to work really tightly like I showed you before. That means I'm going to tension this yarn really tightly. And I find it also really helps to kind of hold my hook a little bit tighter too. But I'm just going to keep my stitches really close. You can see I'm not going to pull up on that loop. I'm going to keep it down close to the top of the fabric and just work those loops off with smaller motions. And this is going to give me just a little bit more space in that color. So there's three double crochets right there. I'm going to go ahead and chain one. Again, if you find yourself really tight, just go ahead and skip those chains. Come down here and work really tightly around those slip stitches there. One and two. And let's see where we are at. Did I give myself too much room? Nope. 
the color change is right, right about there. Again, these two colors are really similar, so it's harder to spot with this one. But I got myself a little bit more room. I don't have any of that yellow showing in that double crochet there. And now I can choose, do I want to go ahead and slip stitch to that third chain and then slip stitch into the space? Or do I feel like the color change is right there, so I need to fudge it a little bit? How do I fix that? Just go straight to the slip stitch. You can see right there, now I'm on my new color. It's not showing in there. And we're all set to begin round four. Round four, of course, begins just like all the other rounds. We start with our chain of six. One, two, three for our first double crochet. One, two, three for our first chain three corner. And then put three double crochets, of course, right back in that same chain three space. As I said, granny squares are great because you can just keep growing them. Now with this particular yarn, you're only supposed to go through five rounds, but if you were using a solid color or using some of your other beautiful red heart yarns, you could keep adding rounds. Right now for round four, we've got our first corner started here. When we come to a group of three there, we chain one, skip over them and work three double crochets into the chain one space. One, two, and three. Three. Chain one again, skip, skipping over the next grouping of three, three double crochets in the next chain one space. So you can really read your work or you can read the written instructions or the chart, both of which are included on the yarn label itself. And as I say, on the post on mooglyblog.com for your convenience as well. So we've got another grouping here of chained one, but when I skip it, I get to that chain three space. So it's time for another corner. Three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets right into that chain space. There's the first chain three, or excuse me, three double crochets. Now I chain three, two, three, whoop, get that on there. There we go. And now three double crochets right back into that chain space. So just continue as we've been doing all the way around and I'll see you as we get to the end of round four. After making the last stitch here in round four, you can see I've got just a little bit of that color left. So I, rather than slip stitching to the chain three, I'm just going to slip stitch right in to the chain three space. So rather than the third chain that we counted there for the top of our double crochet, I'll go right into that space. And that sets me all up for round five. Now round five is the last round for the granny squares that we're making for this sweater and the last round that we're able to make with this yarn in order to maintain this color plan. It's made just like all the other rounds, but it's got a little bit extra because you'll need a few inches at the end to weave in your end. Of course, you'll want to make sure to cut it off before you get to the next color there to begin your next square. So let's go ahead and begin round five together. Again, we'll start with our usual chain of six. There's my first three, two, three. There's my second three, and then three double crochets right back into that corner chain space. Now, if you are finding that all of your rounds, you're coming up short, you're really having to squeeze and make your stitches really tight, that's a really good sign. It's time to go down in hook sizes. If you find that you have too much yarn of each color, every round you've got a few extra inches, you need to maybe every round use it up on that third stitch to finish up the round in that last corner, then you're want, going to want to go ahead and go up a hook size. This is very normal. And while as designers, we always give the hook size that we're using for these projects, when it's something like a sweater where it needs to be a particular size, then hitting gauge is the most important thing, not using the same hook size I'm using and not necessarily using the same hook size listed on the label. So feel free if you're struggling to hit those marks between the rounds, be sure to try some different hook sizes and really give it a whirl. You might even find that you can use one hook size for rounds one through four, and you need to switch to a bigger or a smaller hook for just the very last round. That's pretty normal too, and that's okay. All of those are totally acceptable. And if you've got the Susan Bates Twist and Lock, like I'm using here, you can even put those two different hook sizes on each end of your hook, so they're right there and handy for you to use. I'm going to keep crocheting round five, just as we've been doing all the other rounds, and I'll see you as we get to the end of our granny square. And here you can see I've come to the end of round five. It's the same pattern we were doing before. Anytime there's a group of three in, the, three in the previous round, we chain one and skip it over. Work three double crochets in each of those chain one spaces, and then three double crochets, chain three, 
three double crochets in each corner space, and you'll have a beautiful granny square. You can see right here, I haven't done my slip stitch, but I've come to that next color. It's only a few inches away. So if you find that it's really close, you'll want to pull back and work this last bit a little bit tighter to get yourself just a little bit of wiggle room. But you can see how nice and clear the color change is between the two squares. So you can cut right at that point and then just weave in your end from here. Before you assemble any garment or any other project made with granny squares, I do recommend, especially with this one where you might've been changing your tension a little bit, that you take the time to go ahead and block your squares before you assemble them. Your finished project will really appreciate it. And that's how to crochet squares using Red Heart Granny Square Yarn and how to make the first part of the Market Day cardigan. Again, you'll find all the information on this free crochet along and pattern on mooglyblog.com. So be sure to check that out. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.